So this has been uh, a complicated uh, sphere. Um, the use of vaccines has been associated with uh, improvement in certain kinds of the repertoire, particularly in causing the uh, expansion of tumor reactive lymphocytes. And we, um, for instance, have uh, conducted a large study uh, through the CTN where we took our dendritic cell um, vaccine, which is a personalized fusion vaccine with uh, patient-derived tumor cells, and we vaccinated patients after autologous uh, transplant. And when we uh, looked at this in a randomized setting, comparing it to just giving lenalidomide maintenance alone as compared to the vaccine plus lenalidomide maintenance, we saw a pretty distinctive difference in the number of T cells that were rising after vaccination that were specific to the tumor. In that study, the fundamental question, of course, is how did that affect um, the clinical outcome? And so far, what we've seen is that the patient's response at one year was similar, uh, but the T cell repertoire is quite different. So that raises the question about whether over time you will see some difference based on that reconstitution, or whether other elements are needed to try and better help with the immune repertoire in terms of function. And so there's been a lot of interest in trying to see how do sort of immune modulatory therapies targeting the microenvironment interact with these ways of trying to raise better T-cell responses. That's been a big focus of us and other groups in the field. We, as we learn more about the complexity of the immune microenvironment, we're understanding that you probably need more than one tool uh, to approach it. And it's sort of interesting with CAR T cells as an example, um, we saw that when you first introduce CAR Ts, but without the appropriate level of co-stimulation, there was really no clinical efficacy. And once you were able to overcome that hump and create some functionality with those cells, they all of a sudden were able to expand and kill. By the same token, we see that those same immune sort of parameters that we're following, as mentioned earlier, um, do predict how people do with cars. Do the cars last? Do they maintain their functional capacity? Or are they sort of rendered exhausted by the microenvironment? So I think there's a sense that these different pieces, cars as one example, vaccines as another, immune modulation as a third, will need to be brought together in some kind of thoughtful way if we're going to be effective in creating long-term responses.